So me and my kids, we love watching Scooby-Doo. And especially now that my kids are able to read, we're reading a lot of Scooby-Doo lately. So we had this idea, you know, because of Literacy Month, you know, perhaps if we were to connect with the author of the Scooby-Doo series, uh, he would read uh, one of his books for our school uh, during Literacy Month. So my wife came up with this idea, just let, let, found his email online and, and sent him a request, hey, would you mind reading one of your books for our school's Literacy Month. We didn't think much of it because, you know, how busy could an author of these children's books be? You know, so much so where he probably gets a little, tons of requests from kids all around the country, maybe internationally. So it surprised us when he responded within just a few days saying that he read our email and he would like to read for our school for Literacy Month. It completely shocked us. It got us off, you know, off, we didn't know what to do next. And I imagine that's a little bit of what Hagar felt. You see, Hagar runs away from home because she was being mistreated. She's a sl an Egyptian slave. And, and you find her in the wilderness and in this conversation with God. God actually meets with her. And you see this conversation and, and Hagar has this moment where she kind of steps out of the conversation and she realizes what is actually going on. She makes a statement that we need to hear because sometimes we need to be reminded, why do we pray? And she answers that. She answers, why do we pray? I mean, is God ever, is, is he really listening or does he really care? I mean, Hagar answers that with the first name that she gives God out of the entire Bible you find from Hagar. And she says, wow, I am able to see God and I'm still alive. You, she's talking to God, you are the God who sees me. And it's just this moment where she has like, you not only know what I'm going through, you not only can, uh, uh, know what I'm feeling, but like you see me, you found me in the, in the wilderness and you, that's who you are, God. And we find Hagar just a few chapters later in the book of Genesis where instead of running away, she's forced away. She's, she, she's sent in the wilderness and she finds herself underneath this tree and she just looks up to the heavens and she's crying and, because her son is just about 50 yards away on the brink of death. They're out of water. They don't have any way of surviving in this moment. She's just crying in her last desperation. And God reaches out to her and she said, and God tells her to open her eyes, embrace her son. And he shows her this well, this water that is provided for her. And so in those moments, Hagar realizes not only does God hear my prayers, he sees me and he does care. He provides for me and my, my son. And I'm sure, you know, for you, and sometimes for me, it feels like God doesn't really listen to us or he's too busy to answer us when we pray. But why do we pray? Well, because God actually sees you. He sees me, he sees us, and he does want to interact with you. And I hope that encourages you more today to pray.